In this video, I'm taking a look at the IV Home Charging Pilot, which is a pilot program between Ontario Hydro and Hydro One, as well as the IV Public Charging Network. For the Home Pilot, they installed a level 2 32 amp uh, AC charger, which is compatible with all electric vehicles in North America. As part of the pilot, they're hoping to collect information about how people charge, when they charge, for how long they charge, and other details, uh, as well as get feedback on the mobile apps for both Android and iOS. In the future, since it is a smart connected charger, uh, they may introduce functions such as reducing the power available or even stopping charging if the load in the neighborhood is too high or there is uh, not enough uh, green energy for instance. Previously we had a dual port commercial charger which we picked up for cheap. My father happens to be an electrical engineer so it's easy to make sure everything was working properly. The Ivy residential charger itself is very small and compact. It has a multicolor LED for status as well as a screen that displays various messages. Here it is plugging into an eGolf, and here it is plugging into an i3. Once the car is plugged in, the LED turns from green, which is available, to a slow blue blinking, which means it's charging. The screen changes and it tells you how much total kilowatts have been delivered to the vehicle. Right now it doesn't show instantaneous power draw for, uh, in kilowatts, but hopefully they'll add that as well. On the mobile app itself, it does show that the car is plugged in and charging, but it doesn't have instantaneous readings because that would require uh, constant updates from the charger over the cellular network. You can also set your charging schedule, so after 7 p.m. on weekdays, for instance, or on weekends, for cheaper overnight or time of use rates. Some of the feedback that we provided is to update some of the messaging on the charger itself. Right now it says available, and the number below is actually the total number of kilowatts that the charger has ever delivered, um, so that's kind of confusing. Uh, there are also other messages when there's an error, as well as when the vehicle gets unplugged, that should be updated. Some of the feedback that they've already acted upon is upgrading this cable from an 18-foot cable to a 25-foot cable. It's also a much more flexible rubber. Uh, the previous cable got very stiff when it was colder than minus 10 degrees Celsius. With the IV network, it's nice to see another provider adding in chargers, both locally in cities as well as uh, on the highways, so with en route. They also provide chargers for places like uh, condo buildings and apartment buildings, so it's nice to see this network continue to expand. For long distance travel, they're adding EV stations to the en route uh, rest stops, and they've started opening them up uh, as of uh, February, and they're gonna continue opening them up throughout the rest of the, uh, the summer. The Ontario government itself, despite removing all the rebates and incentives for vehicle purchases, uh, is looking at uh, introducing another option for ultra-low overnight rates. Natural Resources Canada also just announced a $2 million funding for electric utilities in Ontario to help install up to 340 chargers. Other things that are happening around the city of Toronto, they're adding in more uh, on-street chargers for people that uh, don't have like garages or other places to charge their vehicles. Similarly, Toronto Hydro, along with Plug and Drive and Low City Technologies, has their own pilot program that just launched, and it has uh, similar goals. If you qualify for the program, be sure to fill out a survey and see if you can participate. Overall, everything's gone really smoothly, everything from the assessment to getting the electrician to installing the charger to using the mobile apps. So hopefully we'll have more updates once they add more functionality.